I am used to BBK1999 and here's how to commit a genocide. Step 1. You have to find an area where the people you like and the people you want to exterminate both exist. A good region to start would be one where, I don't know, your people are a minority for some reason. And then what you do is you, you know, uh, tell everyone, we want a state of our own. And then you start a civil war. And you're losing the civil war and that sucks. Nobody wants to use this, lose the civil war which they have started explicitly to commit a genocide. So instead of losing, you go to the UN and you tell them, please dear UN, make me a real state. And the UN goes, mm, maybe. And what that means is, usually UN resolution has to pass with a full majority. Everyone has to agree to do something. That's because it's international law. So you, you have to have uni unanimity. And you don't have that. You only get like... A, barely over 50% of the vote, but you still decide, well, UN says I can't exist, so UN drew this line, and you can tell this is how many of my people live here, this is an example pictures, okay, just random, and you decide that these areas should belong to me and the others, they, they can have this area, but you're not happy with that area, so you start a civil war and you fight and somehow you still keep losing, but it's okay because you have friends, you have the colonial superpowers, you have the UK, you have France, you have US, they're all on your side and then you win a civil war and you get to enforce these UN borders which, might I remind you, are not legally binding in any way whatsoever. Okay, The UN cannot make a binding resolution without unanimous agreement, so these borders are illegal, but you do not care. No, you don't care. You want to commit your genocide, so you set up your state, you start being an ethno-state. You start kicking out people who aren't part of your group, because, well, how could it be an ethno-state if there's more than one ethno in it? Come on, don't be silly. So, after you do that, you, you fight your civil war and you get the borders. And during the war, the, the front lines keep moving back and forth, but mostly forth because you have the US on your side. So you get a lot of money and tanks and everything. So you keep moving the front lines forward. And then the UN comes along and it's like, hold on, you can't illegally conquer the territory we didn't give to you. What's wrong with you? So you're like, okay, sorry, uh, we're going to stop attacking. And then the UN says, well, are you going to make a peace negotiation and withdraw your troops? And you do not answer. You just say, we don't negotiate with terrorists. We're in 1948 at this point. And in 1948, all of the other countries around it notice that you're starting to do something that looks an awful like, like, you know, colonialism. Like you're taking this land from the people. Of course, your people were there too. They were just a minority. But now you start kicking out the majority to prop up your own states or all of the countries around you in a random country, uh, a random date, like 1948, they all decide we're not going to have this. We're going to fight for the people who are very similar to our people and uh, we're going to defend them because what you're doing is illegal colonialism condemned by the United Nations and the United States. So you start a war with all of your neighbors and because of the amazing support from the UK, from France, from, from all of Western Europe and from the USA, you win that war. You beat everyone and you start occupying their land. And then they decide, okay, we're gonna do a green line. You start advancing into their territory and then the UN says, hold on, stop, cease fire, do not attack any further. And you're like, okay, fine. We will stop here. We've only occupied this much land so far. We can stop here, we're happy with that. And then the UN is like, well, will you negotiate a ceasefire and stop attacking and, you know, return the land? And you're like, no. And what you do after the following 20 years is taking everyone from this land, which you haven't even gained in a peace conference. You've just occupied it and then signed the ceasefire. And this is occupied land. So technically, legally speaking, you aren't really allowed to deport the people there and settle your own. However, you want to make an ethno state. So obviously that's what you do. You expel, I don't know, maybe 700,000 of those people within two years and settle your own people. Your population of your preferred ethnic group grows from 600,000 to 2 million within 10 years. Meanwhile, you kick out almost a million of the other ethnic group. That's amazing and nobody can criticize you because you legitimately occupied that land. After you do that, you get bored and you're like, well, I have all this land and I kicked all out, out all these people and I've increased my own population by so much. I want more land. So you ally with France and the UK, for example, random example, and you, I don't know, attack Egypt in 1955 and then you, I don't know, take the Sinai Peninsula and start expelling all of the Arabic people, I mean, the, the other group from there as well. And once you do that, you're happy and you're content with that. But these, the, the, these people in Egypt seem to be unhappy with that. So what do they do? They shoot at you. How dare they? I mean, we're just legitimately occupying their land on a ceasefire line 
occupying the entire sewers and they shoot at you? Why do they do that? That's so unfair of them. That's 1969, they just attack you out of nowhere through no fault of your own. You decide to beat them anyways because you have the superior weapons because you're the sugar babe of the United States of America and the entire Western world. So you win that war as well, of course. Three years later, those barbaric nations all around you, for some reason, attack you at once. <gasps> and they start a war which might last very short, like, I don't know, six days. Almost like you planned that to take over all of these areas at once, the second you got an excuse. And when they tried to take back the Sinai Peninsula, which I had been occupying for half a decade, you decide to attack them. So, what do you do with that? Well, they tried to take back the Sinai, so obviously you fight them. And you win, because you have the support of all of the Western world for some reason, which lies before 1945. And <laughs> after that, you're still in conflict with all these nations around you, and you start having like peace conferences with them, and it's weird, because you're occupying the Golan Heights, and Sinai, and the Gaza Strip, and they just won't make peace. So you decide, well, it's fine. We're going to give them the Sinai back, and we're going to pinky promise to leave alone the Gaza Strip. And you do that. You return the Sinai Peninsula. Then a few years later, you notice something. All those millions of people you have displaced in the generation of your ethno state. You know, when you decided to kick out all of the people who used to be there to settle your own people. Yeah, well, those people still exist in another country. And now they're raising children. And their children are raised knowing that. They lost everything. They lost their family house, they lost their family farm, they lost everything they ever had. They were made into refugees because your state decided to take everything they own. So what do they do? They, they, they become angry and that's horrible because when they become angry, they decide to do something and that's the worst thing people can do is something. And they start to attack you, they shoot at you, they shoot rockets at you, how dare they? It's, I don't know, a random year like... Um, 1970, no, 1982 now. And in this year you decide to, well, um, these people who we displaced are now in another country. Let's illegally invade that other country to stop these people whom we displaced, displaced from attacking us. So you decide to occupy a random country, let's uh, make one up, Lebanon, uh, from 1982 to 2000. For 18 years you occupy this entire country under the guise of protecting yourself. You do that illegally, of course. You ain't never allowed any of that. But who cares? Because now you have increased your area of control. By this time, you have managed to use the same principle of starting a war, advancing your troops, admitting to a ceasefire because the international community is getting angry, and then not retreating. You keep the land which you occupied. That's such a weird strategy. I wonder if that works. Well, you keep doing that. You keep taking land in a military offensive because someone attacked you or because some excuse, you take the land and you keep it and you never negotiate giving it back. And then in, I don't know, after you've been doing this for, I don't know, 60 years or something, there's a lot of generations of people who are angry with your regime for some reason, just because you've displaced millions of their people and killed millions more in illegal offensive wars and because the founding of your nation wasn't even legitimate in the first place. So a bunch of those get really angry and really radical and they decide your country killed millions of them, so they're going to kill a few thousand of yours. So what they do is they launch a military operation. They go into your country and they start killing civilians, which you've been doing for a while, but <gasps> do you see what that is? It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to keep going. They just attacked you. The entire international community is now on your side. So what do you do? You start a counteroffensive. You kill everyone who attacked you. And then you look at these few areas of the original country that are still there. Again, these pictures are completely random. They have nothing to do with the hypothetical story I'm telling, okay? They attack you. So what do you decide to do? Well, you're gonna fight back, aren't you? Issue is there's about two million people in this place now. All of the refugees have gone to that place. And you decide, well, there's gonna be enemies in there. Yeah, of course. So you drop leaflets. You tell everyone um, there's terrorists there. They're evil, they're hiding in hospitals. And you drop leaflets telling the people, evacuate now. Two weeks later, you start a ground invasion. Start bombing the entire place. And if civilians die, you say, they can't be civilians. They didn't evacuate. 
Only military is supposed to be here. Of course, the reason these civilians won't evacuate is because they know that you're gonna do the same thing again. You're just going to uh, go there, advance the front line, sign a ceasefire, and never give the land back. They know if they leave now and you take it, they will never see their homes again. So they refuse to leave, but you don't care because you get to call them terrorists. So you're going to nuke them. And at this point, we're in the present day and we don't know what you're going to keep doing in the future. But here's my prediction anyways. What you are going to do if you want to continue your genocidal project, is advance for about half of this occupied area, which for random reasons we're going to call the Gaza Strip. You're going to occupy about half of it, let's say the north half, for some reason. And you do that, and then you sign a ceasefire, and you're like, okay, fine, fine, no more fighting. And then the UN asks you to sign a peace treaty and return the land you occupied, and you don't. And the people who left, who you told to leave, or the people who you murdered, never get to go back to their homeland. And then you settle your own people. And then, a few years later, the children of the people who you just displaced from their homes forever, they're going to be angry, and they're going to take up arms, and they're going to attack your country. And it's going to be a really great excuse to murder every single person remaining from the original country you wanted to take. You're going to murder every single one of them, and take your land for them, and the international community is going to be on your side, because you're doing it in such a methodical, smart way. So how to commit a genocide? Gradually. So, um, yeah, this was about Israel. <laughs> oh, cheers. Oh, everyone needs to drink. How do you deal with this shit otherwise? Seriously.